Hello and welcome to the PropTech Hot Seat and I'm Property Radio with myself, Carol Tallon, the show where we explore trends and technologies driving innovation across the built environment. This show is brought to you in partnership with PropTech Ireland, the hub for investors, innovators and indeed for industry leaders. Today, I'm delighted by join, to be joined by Harry Walston, VP of Sales at Outra. Harry, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Carol. Good to meet you. And Outra. What is Outra? Oh, good question. So Outra is actually one of the best kept secrets in the real estate market. So we are predominantly um, the leading data intelligence company specialising in the UK property market. Um, when you when you describe yourself as the best kept uh, secret in uh, particularly across PropTech, I'm afraid there's a couple there's a couple of PropTech innovators who would find their services maybe um, being the, the best kept secret that actually I would say technology providers, innovators who are powering so much of the ESG, uh, the critical transformation that we're seeing at the moment. These brands are so they're just not well known at all. So actually, I'm really glad that you've identified that up top. So um, in relation to Outra, how long have you been in the market? Um, Outra's been around for about six years now. Um, And again, when I say the best kept secret, it's because a lot of people are familiar with our work, but not our brand. So we are part of a wider group. We have operated like providing specialist data models to different areas of some very large companies. So that's what I mean by the best kept secret. But if yeah. you go in and like kind of look under the hood of Outra and you actually take a look at our founders and our leadership team, these are some of the most influential people in property. So just to give you an example, Carol, um, Giles Mackey, our founder, he founded HomeTrack and HomeTrack was then scaled and sold to Zoopla for 100 million. Um, our other advisors on the board, we've got Dominic Grace, who was a leadership at Savills for 35 years. Um, another example, Tom Nicholson. Tom Nicholson has headed up some of the major house builders in the UK, including Cress Nicholson. So that's why people know, uh, know our leadership team and will know our work, but they might not know our name. You know, I I love that, um, you know, we don't talk enough maybe about the founders and the influence that comes in. And one thing we saw, like going back, you know, maybe back to 2016, 2017, uh, when tech innovators were coming in without real estate or construction domain knowledge, they were struggling, they were falling flat. And, you know, in some cases they were solving problems that, yes, were problems, but they weren't priority problems. You know, they weren't the problems that the industry had the margins to resource. Whereas actually when you get that beautiful combination of technology and real estate and construction coming together that's a huge amount of domain knowledge and technical expertise um that is that is quite a winning combination and we've seen that time and time again and you know again when you're coming maybe not as a first time founder particularly in technology that just brings so many benefits that that you know, it, 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 people maybe don't understand. So let's talk a little bit about um the types of sectors that you're servicing at the moment. And then we'll get into maybe some of these specialist data models. You know, what is it that you're collecting? What are the insights um, that you're generating? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you'd expect with a, a property orientated business, our kind of key verticals are, um, I suppose, the most well known. So we're working with the house builders, so the major house builders. We're working with the estate agents, uh, property investment businesses, and uh, built to rent as well. Built to rent is uh, you know really on a growth curve within the UK market, um, and that is key and a really good uh, a really good sector that's starting to get really smart with data usage. Now there are other verticals who kind of benefit from what we do, uh, which is probably outside of this conversation. So we had a lot of interest in from uh, insurance companies, uh, utility companies, digital retail, because the type of data that we produce and the predictions is actually relevant to a plethora of different industries. But we'll we'll stick to the main ones for this conversation, Carol. Very good. And look, I want to get into the types of data now, but um, actually it's very rare that we meet uh, technology companies that are serving both, say, construction and home builders as well as the kind of retail arm, like like a state agency and uh, property investment companies. So let's take the home builders for a moment, because obviously in the UK, you have a similar situation like we have in Ireland at the moment. You know, the single largest problem we have is lack of supply and 
and you know how to speed up supply and there's a huge amount happening in terms of off-site and other modern methods of construction uh, but we're just not getting there fast enough at all it's it's the demand that we refer to for so many years as pent up demand doesn't seem to be being addressed at, at any level so talk to me about what the, the what particularly you're doing for house builders and how that can impact the delivery of new homes yeah so you know uh, as you rightly said um, house building is such a hot, hot topic i mean it's you know in the news week in week out and uh, certainly no one has discovered a magic wand for either the construction or the funding of construction yet so the way that we are helping um the house builders is in a number of different ways so because we have so much data down to the household level within the UK and can um, create models, use the machine learning over the top of that, we can identify to the house builders where there's a deficit. So um, we can tell the builders what to build, where to build, and who can afford it. So instead of your standard planning, uh, if we know that there is a shortage of three bedroom house and there's a higher area of affordability, that's going to influence what they will build. Now, the other way we then help them is that with our data models, we identify who is going to be looking to buy a house within that area who meets the affordability. So therefore, we can actually provide them with leads, which allows them to sell off plan and on plan and avoid these situations of where you know the house builders have sold a lot off plan and then have their amber and red sites where they have houses which weren't suitable for those particular areas um you know in terms of of guiding um what to build and where to build it you know the affordability piece is massively important but that has to marry then with uh, local zoning and planning so in terms of, do you work exclusively with the private sector? Um, not exclusively with, with, with the private sector, but that's certainly where a lot of our demand um, has spiked in the last six months. So are you able to track, say, in terms of your data showing? Because one thing we've seen, I don't know if it's the same um, across the UK, but certainly in Ireland, you know, we saw that uh, maybe our uh, population stats um, in terms of the national statistics that are the government was using was well behind the curve. You know, our expectations, everything was forecast maybe on the low side. And it meant that we were planning public services, including the zoning of land and what new homes would be required to a much lower level. And maybe we weren't as accurate as to where um, uh, uh, where certain types or typologies of housing should be and within what budget range. And this is quite frustrating for the industry because the industry um, tends to have better information, better market intelligence and, and data than sometimes the state does. And or maybe maybe it's not better, maybe it's just more current and that the state policy just takes a longer time. So are you running into issues or are your home builder clients running into issues where they have good, reliable, credible, robust data telling them, what is needed in an area and at what price point that needs to be delivered. So that kind of dictates the typology of, of housing or apartments or whatever it is. But does that fit in with uh, local zoning, the planning that local authorities are willing to give? So um, to be honest, I wouldn't want to speak on behalf of house builders themselves. We are just kind of providing them with the intelligence and those are the conversations that they would be leading. What I can say to you is where we are working in the kind of public sector is due to the intelligence and the data we have, um, this, this is a really kind of a good example of different usage, Carol, once you've got these insights to household level. We are working with people like the vulnerability index, so actually providing um, details on households whose affordability is tracking the other way. So um, we, we are identifying households who are at risk of falling into fuel poverty or potentially could be defaulting on their mortgage in the next six months. So the, this type of intelligence is kind of critical to the public sector um, on you know, for social aspects. So I know it didn't directly answer your question, but I, show, I think that kind of gives you the type of usages outside uh, house builders, estate agents, because we have the depth and breadth of information. 
Yeah, and actually, no, I, I think that's very relevant because, again, while, you know, my focus may be primarily on uh, zoning and uh, where you're, where home builders are likely to get their planning, the reality is that that should be based on a housing need. So actually, it's reassuring that the local authorities are taking in this kind of information. So as long as they're using, you know, uh, and I'm sure we both had the experience of understanding when a lot of information, good, credible, robust information is made available and is not used. And that has been a real problem within this industry. Um, so maybe you'd have a different perspective on that. But let's talk kind of let's shift over to the real estate side and whether it's across state agencies or property investment companies. What's the kind of data that's driving decisions right now? Uh, great question. So um, I'm going to rewind a little bit and talk to you about the type of data that we use, because, again, data gets thrown around a lot. Um, so if I can go I kind of go under the hood a little bit and tell you what the data is and then how we use it, then that will give you the indication of what we're actually producing to help these businesses. Perfect. So, um, Outra, we combine uh, over 300 different data sources and we bring it in. So on every household, we have approximately 2,300 data points. And those data points is everything from the thickness of the walls to the uh, when the boiler was last serviced, the energy rating, everything you can think of. And then we layer in like the demographic data. So the affordability. So what's the kind of average income of the house, um, age of children, uh, digital preferences. Um, so this is the type of, of data we do. Over the top of that, we then layer in the machine learning and the algorithms, and that allows us to predict behavior. Um, so when we talk about the estate agent side, we produce a number of different data points for them, but predominantly we are identifying people who they want in their portfolio. So if they specialize in exclusive three bedroom flats in certain areas of Manchester, we can provide them with people who, before they even know it themselves, are likely to want to sell their property within the next six months. So instead of having to fight for what is coming on the market with their competitors, they can start being proactive, be hyper-targeted with marketing, and get ahead of the curve. So if you know who is going to list their property with, within your region, that you can actually target them down to the individual household level, that's absolute gold dust. And um, that's really powerful. And in fact, uh, frequently we have conversations around uh, the future of property listings portals. Um, you know, what is the future? How will people find properties, uh, particularly in terms of some of the some of the prop tech that's available now? Actually, platforms and portals probably haven't kept pace uh, with uh, with uh, some of the new technologies. And I think it's really interesting when we look at. Uh, this scenario and I, I can remember this first being talked about a decade ago where we would actually get to the point where there would be enough knowledge or, or data points really on householders that we would know before they would know that essentially technology would know that um they were getting ready to buy an apartment or they were they were gearing up and getting ready to buy a home or coming to a place in their life when it's likely that they'd be ready to buy a home even if they hadn't yet thought about it or made a mortgage application or any sort of outreach yet and similarly for sales so can you break this down even more for me because i think this is a really interesting thing um to see okay we talked about it for a decade so are we actually there yet like with the level of predictability and accuracy are we able to predict when to to a household level when people are likely to be thinking of listing their home Absolutely, absolutely. So um, our, our prediction is that, that, that we provide, and again, we provide them for individual estate agency up to the, the, the largest players out there in the market. Um, we, 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 depending on the area, the accuracy can be one in four to one in six, which is um, you know, an incredibly high ratio. Uh, when you think of the the investment that the real estate make in marketing and blanket marketing. And remember that this market is still quite traditional with some of the marketing techniques. So the, the more traditional uh, direct mail marketing, um, you know, or spot laminated brochures, your local advertising, all this type of thing. 
to actually, instead of blanket marketing, you know, five, 10,000 properties, to actually go and target 700, 1,000 properties, knowing that one in four, one in five of those is actually going to move. And then you do the maths of the percentage that the estate agent makes on each of those properties, you start getting to some big numbers. And um, I know, kind of work in this area, um, this this particular market of estate agency have been late adopters with certain areas of technology. And some of the work that I have done in previous lives within retail has been the opposite end of the scale. We have been the early adopters pushing the boundaries and then other people have followed. But now I see there's been a considerable acceleration within the real estate market, which is A, has been driven because there's demand and a need um covid drove a lot of digital change mm -hmm. um, as well and also there's been a lot of consolidation in this market so as we as the market consolidates the competition get larger and so looking for smarter ways to have a competitive advantage has become critical yeah and, and, and to be honest i i it, there is quite a contradiction in that that um I, I that certainly real estate has they have been slow adopters and in fact I would say that um investment companies were well ahead of estate agents and I would say property managers and block managers were well ahead of estate agents who were dealing with traditional sales they was really almost like a denial phase that that lasted much longer than it ought to have but actually in terms of lead generation at a time when we're seeing not much supply of new homes coming into a market. And um, in the UK, you have a much higher turnover of properties than we've ever had in, in Ireland. So in fact, in Ireland, people tend not to, to move, you know, when you yeah. get into your home and you stay there forever. And um, so we've always had a lower turnover. So actually lead generation in the secondhand residential market is a massive challenge, not just for our rural agents, for our, for our um, urban agents as well. So actually let's and i know that agents listening in here today that's what they're going to be interested in so maybe talk a little more about how estate agents in a local area i mean is this in terms of the cost of this is this cost prohibitive for a small agency that only has six estate agents and um, in a in a town uh, you know not in a big city not at all not at all um you know we are you know um Key to be the number one in our market and to be able to be number one in the market uh, particularly in the kind of real estate you know you have to look at the kind of long tail as well uh, there's no point us, you know servicing the, the the top five and not having solutions for the other 90 percent of the market so we are absolutely working with you know a one-man band of smaller estate agencies uh, as well because you know we we want to be the number one go-to for everyone right the way across the sector um, so we and we make it, and we make it affordable for them as well. And in terms of setting expectations, because anything where you're looking at um, data and market intelligence, you know, again, we're trying to interpret all of the information. But there is, uh, you know, our models are trained on what would have happened in the past. So there's an element of looking both backwards and forwards, essentially. So in terms of setting reasonable expectations for, say, retail estate agencies, you know, on, on the high street that decide to use this service, how soon might they be able to action some of these insights? You can you can you can um, you can action them straight away because the a, a lot more traditional algorithms are just doing comparisons to previous years. But that, 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 that those are um, kind of yesterday's algorithms um you know so we are using machine learning and ai which is actually taking yes past behavior but real world behavior uh um, and what is happening inside the house as well as outside and then what's happening in the area so actually you know our insights are real time and um, harry are you and your team operating across the uk only at this stage yep uk only OK, so in terms of the work you're doing, you know, particularly with the property investment companies, um, I would imagine then you are maybe are privy to spotting trends before they're reported in the marketplace. Um, you know, and I, you touched on there the built rent. Um, but what kind of trends are you seeing emerge through the data, you know, that might give us some indication of the marketplace over the next 12 months? Well, um, 
Uh, I'm not going to give I'm not going to give the, these trends away on, on this podcast, Carol. But um, we we actually did an event. We, we we did an event a couple months ago where we actually laid out all our predictions we made last year and made new predictions for this year. Now the recording's available uh, online, so and people can pick it up from the LinkedIn. And we're also going to be producing the annual annual report, which is going to be available to everyone. So we have got those predictions, but uh, I think it, you can um, either go yeah, on. Online. We have to dig for them. You have to dig for them. Yeah. <laughs> for them. yeah. My, okay. my, my marketing team will thank me for that. <laughs> well, tell me, what was your hit rate in terms of the predictions from last year? Your success rate? Yeah, 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 no, pretty good. And the other thing is, is that, you know, some of the predictions, uh, yes, we're utilizing our data, but also it was the, some of the predictions made by our, our board members and owners. So, you know, th th these are people who've been in the industry for years and they are giving their opinions. So one of the lovely things about that event is, you know, yes, we had predictions based on our data, but we had a live panel, both with outro people and other industry experts giving their individual opinions based on their different areas of the market so uh it was a really good event and uh yeah we'll have to wait till next year to see how good our predictions were very good and i suppose uh finally you know what's what's in store i mean you, you talked about outra being in the marketplace now for six years which in almost any other business would be quite new you'd still be in scaling stage but actually in the technology business that makes you one of the more established and one of the longer established um prop tech providers so what's next for outra um over the next year or two great question so um the what next for outra is uh, a lot of the work we've been doing and all the models we have productized so we've now made them available to the whole market so we brought those to market towards the end of last year and we've got new products which are being released um month on month so the big two areas of growth that i have seen one we've touched on which is the house builders um starting to get really smart in their data usage um, and as we see, whichever government is going to lead us in the UK, housing new and new housing is going to be top of the agenda. So I, I see that trend and that demand for ultra see in, increase. The other area where um, we've launched a new product and we're seeing a huge amount of growth is the the build to rent. So on the build to rent side, that is actually combining. Uh, a number of different areas within the market from the builders to the renters to the property investment. Um, and we've built a tool which allows the built to rent organizations to manage their own portfolios, but to compare it against other people's portfolios and to look at live trends within pricing to make sure the pricing in the right area. And then also link through to planning, see what's coming up in planning. So if I had to um, uh, put my £10 down or £20, £10 each way, uh, I'll be going for uh, the increase in house builders and the, the BTR sector over the next 12 months. Interesting, interesting. And um, finally, Harry, just um, if people are curious and they want to know more um, based on the videos you mentioned earlier and maybe some of the predictions for the UK market over the next year or two, where can they find that information? Um, either from our website, so www.outra.co.uk or uh, Outra on LinkedIn or look me up, connect with me, come and have a conversation. Super, that's great. Listen, that's all we've time for today, but thank you so much and best of luck to yourself and the Outra team. And we look forward to seeing how this progresses. And that's all we've time for today. My thanks to Harry Walton, VP of Sales at Outra. My thanks as always to producer Katie Tallon and to the audio team at Hear Me Roar Media. Before we go, special word of thanks to our sponsor, PropTech Ireland, for supporting the podcast and making these conversations possible. And finally, thank you indeed for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of the PropTech Hot Seat. In the meantime, please be sure to check out all of the other Irish and international real estate and construction shows here on iPropertyRadio.com. <laughs>